The Queen stage of the Women's UAE Tour did not disappoint, even better than last year where Gaia Riolini first showed herself as an elite climber. It's a Unipuerto stage, so even without crosswinds, it was a pretty easy run in to Jebel Hafeet, which is yeah, about 11Ks at 6 to 7% gradient. So it's not the hardest climb. Draft is important at the speeds these riders are doing, although there are some steeper sections of 8, 9, 10% in the middle, which is where someone like Riolini, a pure climber, as we saw on Covadonga last year, would need to put Kopecky under pressure. Remember, Kopecky on Tourmalet was sixth ahead of a lot of riders we would consider pure climbers like Amanda Spratt, etc. So she would be she wouldn't just drop instantly on a stage like this, especially without mountains beforehand. There was an initial break attempt from Erasso Lassa. And then Movistar tried to spice it up, but SD Works closed that down as well. So without too much crosswind action, eventually a break did go with Gladys Verhulst the strongest of it on FDJ Suez with SD Works controlling it. So the gap was pretty big, six minutes at like 50Ks. It progressively came down, but was still pretty solid at the base of her feet where we saw SD Works doing the final lead out into the climb. Verhulst predictably went clear at the base, now a 2.30 gap for Lorena Vibas, repaying the hard work or the lead outs of her teammate Kapeki on previous stages started to pace really hard as you can see by the group splitting behind or just setting a firm tempo but then I saw Riolini already second wheel and I was thinking surely not surely after what she showed last year and you know she could have won this stage but they decided Elisa Longaborghini would win surely Elisa Longaborghini would set a really furious pace for a couple of k's for Riolini to launch her on the harder sections uh, but instead, she she eats so much wind, and she can't afford to eat any wind because uh, she's so small relative to the other riders. Uh, she's always slightly off the wheel or just eating a lot of wind. Then Canyon Shram came to the front, trying to light it up either for Bowenfind or Neve Bradbury, who's come top 10 in the Giro, I think, last year in GC. And while they're pacing, 8.1 Ks to go, really any attacks but the group was just way too big at this point and as you can see the draft is still really important when they're going over 20 k's an hour even though she does create a split it's on six percent seven percent a lot of more effort for her she got Bunel in the wheel who i think's at a teenager she's a big climbing talent on uh, the mavic team watch out for her she was good in australia in january but look Kapeki. She was riding steady. She knew how long this climb was. She knew it flattened out at the top. She paced steadily, but when she needed to, bang, straight back in the wheel. And then Riolini has to pull off. I was thinking, okay, Elisa Longo Bagini's got to go on the front, set a really hard pace to try and put Kapeki under pressure so Riolini can launch again before the steepest section. In the end, it didn't really matter too much because Mavi Garcia just fulfilled that function anyway on Liv uh, Alula team. She just came to the front and seemingly was happy to pace uh, with Kapeki in the wheel before Riolini attacked again. Again, Kapeki trying to smooth her power, and this was uh, the last we'd see of Elisa Longaborghini with this group with 6Ks to go. So I dare say they should have tried to play her aggressively at the start to pace really, really hard to set up Riolini. But... To be honest, Kapeki was so strong, and they did such a fast time anyway, I'm not sure it would have made too much of a difference, because Garcia really kept the pace on, although the steady pacing of her probably suited Kapeki more than like a stop-start race. And this was the moment, the 10, 12% section just before it levels off. Could anyone put Kapeki under pressure? And Neve Bradbury did exactly that, attacking and showing that she's ready to step up. Still in her early 20s, previous winner of the Zwift Academy and already performing really, really well on the road in previous years. Is she ready to step up into that Tour de France top five on mountain stages level? But here's the problem for the others. You see that crest where it levels off. Kapeki hits the wind for the first time here, about 100 meters, 150 meters before that crest. Does a big surge and then basically puts Riolini in the bin. 
because she can't keep up with someone with that much additional power on a false flat drag or a flatter drag. And without the draft, she's really, really going to struggle against the bigger riders. And even Garcia was struggling to hold the wheel of Capecchi, who goes across using the parkour to her advantage, not pulling on the steeper sections, conserving her power. And then you can see how fast it is. Then when it flattens off two, three, four percent, she has the advantage over the smaller climbers with her higher absolute power, but also just her higher level. It seems like Kopecky is is wanting to transform completely into a GC rider. She already podiumed the tour last year behind Volering, closes back to Bradbury, but now with 700 meters left, she gets a bit of time to recover, goes on the front to start pacing. She's already in the virtual GC lead, and I said in the stage one recap, why did they bring Kopecky here? There's no stages here for Kopecky. <laughs> they, she made me look a bit silly or foolish on this finish. Perhaps I shouldn't have forgotten how well she climbed when she put her mind to it last year. And she absolutely dusts Bradbury in the final sprint where we've seen Poggy, we've seen Lutschenko, seen Adam Yates. Kopecky now, big win on Jabel Hafeet. We know she's good in the classics. We know she's going to dominate and probably win Tour of Flanders there or tick off Roubaix. But what does this mean for GC this year? Unfortunately, maybe it means SD Works are even stronger in that regard. She wins ahead of Bradbury, then Mavi Garcia, good effort. Did the same Watts Pekilo as those riders when beating the Hafeet record, but was just in the win too long. Then Riolini, Bunel, Royak, as long as Borghini, Persica, Meisering, and Bowen rounding out the top 10. Here's what Kopecky had to say after the stage crazy uh, I was really motivated for this stage and I really wanted to see how far I could uh, I could go on this climb but um, yeah of course I, I wanted this and I, I dreamed or hoped really to yeah win the stage it was in my mind but then to also do it is um, yeah it's very good for the confidence <laughs> in terms of GC that's now a wrap with Kopecky taking the stage Bradbury should be fine with a sprint stage today defending second and Mavi Garcia in third so podium looks locked hope you enjoyed this recap check out the Wasp per kilo article for this climb down link below and I'll see you with uh, another race later today ciao